Hi, I'm Brett Moline with Wyoming Farm Bureau and today we are going to have an interview with Representative Harshman from Natrona County. He has the great privilege, honor, to be the chair of the House Appropriations Committee. This is probably the busiest committee of all of them at the legislature. So with that, Representative, where do you think, how do you think the session went? You know, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's a supplemental budget session, but uh, so there were about, uh, as you know, we passed a two-year budget. We did that last year called a biennial budget. And uh, then uh, each year we come back then and there are certain changes you have to make or additions, those kind of things. And uh, so roughly a hundred different agencies in our state government. And this budget pulled in about 30, 33, I think. So about a third of the agencies, many Many were for small language changes, some were for, you know, increased appropriations, few were to actually decrease the appropriations, and, and uh, so uh, that part of the, you know, the work, we, we basically just had two weeks of uh, budgetary hearings before the session began on a, on a biennial basis. When we do the entire budget, that's a month of meetings before the rest of it, and that's what people call uh, the short session, but it's not short when you're on appropriations. Every session's a long session, so but it's gone pretty well, really. Was there any surprises in this session? I know our revenue projections are down, but did our did that really impact this supplemental budget? Our decrease in projections? Well, I think uh, the the biggest change was really uh, it affected our savings accounts, and uh, you know. So we're sitting, we work off of projected revenues, and, uh, and we call that the Craig uh, Consensus Revenue Estimating Group. And as you know, I mean, a big chunk of our state revenues, about 70%, nearly 70% are minerals or uh, uh, legacy minerals to the Permanent Mineral Trust Fund. But, uh, uh, but we had such a large drop in the price of oil so quickly the last three months of the year, and so our Craig projection was forecast downward when we came in, we come in in January with a new projection when we start ready to run the, the uh, state budget in the legislative session that down $222 million. And so the first issue was to really plug that budget hole and what basically what we did are, were uh, revenues that were going to go to savings to our rainy day fund, the LSRA we call that, <clears throat> and, and you heard a lot of talk through the campaign season, you know, two billion dollars. Well, it's not two billion anymore. It's 1.8 because we took 200 million, roughly. That was uh, earmarked to go to that account and, uh, to plug the budget hole. And uh, so then I think you know it was a very modest uh, s supplemental budget in the general fund side. I think eight million dollars in increased spending. Uh, most of that was to rebase nursing homes and some DD waiver. Uh, increases as well. That was more than half of that amount. But we did something probably a little unique that we haven't done before is that we we uh, we did these uh, contingent appropriations uh, on January or, or uh, July 1st is when we find out about capital gains that we don't profile from our permanent mineral trust fund. We have a pretty good idea where those are going to be because we only have a few months left. Uh, barring you know some unforeseen event like we had in 2009, and, and uh, so we we put some some appropriations about 76 million that will become effective July 1st if the money shows up, and we also did that basically what I'd call savings accounts to July of 16 that are contingent things that we know are out there from rebuilding our state health facilities. We added more money to that, the science initiative at the university. Uh, state office buildings, those kind of things. What are some large issues budgetarily that you can see coming up for the uh, 2016 budget session? Well, I think, you know, the, the drop in, in uh, energy prices, particularly oil, uh, is going to have a huge impact. And, you know, for every $5 drop in the price of oil, it's $35 million to the general fund. And uh, so it's significant. And, uh, so, you know, when you see the price of oil, uh, you usually see West Texas Intermediary. That's uh, kind of the benchmark. And if you see that at $50, you know that Wyoming crude, because of higher transportation costs, is about $9 less than that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we were, you know, rolling along projecting $65, $75 uh, barrel in oil. You know, we're, we're not above 50 now. And so those are going to continue to get 
uh, projected downward. And also, the price of natural gas has not bumped during the winter, and usually it'll get up to you know five, six, seven dollars per MCF, and that has not moved. So we're not at our projection there. So I think the biggest issue coming back next year is really we're going to see a lower revenue picture. And I think the first thing you do is you start examining programs and where we can cut back and those kind of things. And so I think you're going to see uh, probably some cuts. It's hard to tell. Things can change quickly. Uh, but uh, certainly modest if, if slow growth on that. But I think the thing we've tried to do in this committee is to make sure that, uh, you know, we can spend every dollar in state government on just Department of Health you know, our corrections. But what we've tried to do is keep a, a, a smaller amount out there that we can continue these projects from at our community colleges, university, our state health facilities, those kind of things to uh, continue building and updating our facilities around the state. And I think that's important. We're going to try to continue to do that. And I think the other side of the budget that we don't talk about much is the school side. Mm -hmm. And as as you know, coal lease bonuses, we've, we've done over a billion dollars of school construction in the last 12 years and not none of that's been paid for by the taxpayer. Those are all multinational energy companies that mine coal uh, on federal lands, most of it, and uh, there are no bonuses out there on the horizon. They will end uh, in 17, our payments in fiscal year 17. So, you know, that's a significant chunk of money and we're trying to save and, and look at other revenues for that but uh, uh, so that's going to be a big issue next year. Well and one thing Farm Bureau appreciates is that we do keep the mineral trust fund inviolate and so that we because I, a lot of people don't real remember where we were in the late 80s early 90s when exactly. it was it was much worse than we are yeah. today. Well with that representative thank you very much yeah. for taking the time and we look forward to seeing you next week with our last update. We will update on the final actions on the bills we've been following for this session. Thank you. Thank you.